Hello everyone, how are you today? This is Mark. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. He passed me the salt for my salad. She put a question to me. I took her business card and gave it to my boss. Mrs. Roseboro fed boiled chicken to her dog. Stephen had left a letter for her on the table. In this lesson, we're going to look at the transitive verbs, so stay tuned. So, the transitive verbs, what are they? Let me explain first what is a direct and indirect object. A direct object is somebody or something that something is done to. I will explain with the example. The indirect object instead is somebody who benefits from the action or receives something as a result. Let's take a look at the example just to better understand. So, she lent Frank her pen. Well, we said that a direct object is somebody or something that something is done to. So, in this case, we have to ask, what did she lend to Frank? What did she lend to Frank? And that would be the direct object, her pen. Her pen would be the direct object. So, she lent Frank her pen. Her pen is something that something, something else, is done to. So, to look at the indirect objects instead, we need to ask who in this case, right? Who did she lend her pen? Who did she lend her pen? And the answer would be Frank. The indirect object is somebody who benefits, in this case, Frank is the one who benefits from the action, from lending, in this case, right? So, indirect object, Frank, and direct object, her pen. Now, if a verb can take both the direct and indirect object, they are called the transitive verbs, right? So, <laughs> in this case, to lend is a detransitive verb. There is an example and uh, the introductory example, I think it was. He passed me the salt for my salad. So, I know that pass is a detransitive verb. Why? Because we can have both the direct and indirect object in the sentence, in the same sentence. So, he passed what? What did he pass me? What did he pass me? The salt. And the salt is the direct object. Then, we need to ask, who did he pass the salt to? Who did he pass the salt to? And the answer would be me, right? And so, me is the indirect object. So, there are some rules that we need to follow to understand better the detransitive verbs. So, the first rule, and the easiest, I think, you can put the, uh, the indirect object in, the prep in a prepositional phrase. That comes after the direct object. What is a prepositional phrase? There is a lesson on prepositional phrases, and uh, if you want to watch that lesson, you may click here. But let's go and uh, take a look at the uh, example that I wrote right here. She put a question to me. She put a question to me. So, she put what? A question, and this is the direct object. A question. Who did she put a question to? To me. And that would be the indirect object. And you can see, to me is also a prepositional phrase, because it has to, which is a preposition, to me. And it comes after the direct object, just like the rule, right? So, another example. Their boss pays what? A good salary. 
direct object. To his employees. To his employees is a, fr a prepositional phrase, which is also a, uh, an indirect object. So you can see that it comes after the direct object. So their boss pays what? A good salary. Who does their boss pay a good salary to? To his employees, right? Okay, when do we use this rule? This rule is used when the indirect object is more important or longer than the direct object. Just like my uh, example, I've been teaching English to retired executives who have a lot of spare time. And you can see that the right object is very long to retire executives, okay, who have a lot of spare time. We can add that too. And this is very long. So we need to use this rule. And I've, te I've been teaching what? English is the direct object. And then the rest, it would be the uh, indirect um, object. And so we can say that teach is also a detransitive verb. Now, I'm going to erase this and we're going to look at the other rules. So let's continue with our rules. The second one, when the direct object is the pronoun it or them, it is normal to use the following prepositional structure. Let me um, introduce the first example. I took her business card and gave it to my boss. So you can see her business card, it is replaced by the uh, pronoun it, okay, gave it. To my boss, to who? To my boss, indirect object. Another thing that I want to tell you about this point is that a lot of people make the following mistake. They say, he handed me it. No, we must say, he handed it to me. He handed it, it what? The business card, for example, to me. And to me will be the indirect object. So the direct object goes before the indirect object and after the main verb, if it's it or them, okay? So let's look at the third point then. Add to, to the indirect object to use it inside a prepositional phrase, much like I said before. So especially those were the direct object can be transferred from one person to another. Let's take a look at the examples. Mrs. Roseborough fed boiled chicken to her dog. So to her dog, like I said before, is a prepositional phrase, right? To her dog. And here we add it to the preposition to, um, to the uh, indirect object. So another example, and this is clearer, he took out a gun, so he took out a gun and handed it, so the gun handed it, like we said before, to the police. And then they, this is the indirect object and thus the prepositional phrase with to, to the police. Some verbs that take this form are accord, give, show, sing, mail, play, loan, post, lend, feed, etc. Now, the last point that I want to mention about the, uh, the transitive verbs is when describing an action involving one person doing something which will benefit another person, use the preposition for with the indirect object. Let me explain by giving the examples. Stephen had left what? A letter for who? For her on the table. For her is the indirect object and we use for, the preposition for. Another example. We booked 
what? We booked a nice room for them. So for is the preposition and it goes within the direct object in the city center. One thing to remember though, there are uh, verbs that do not usually have their indirect object introduced by to or for. And some are promise, forgive, grudge, envy, refuse, deny, charge, bet, cause, allow, etc. I gave you an example for the last example. He promised them, so see, we don't need four or, the, uh, or two here. He promised them. This was the last point in his explanation. And that's right, this is the last point. So I promised you, this was the last point in my explanation. So that's it for today. If you have any comments, requests, or if you want to post your own example, you may do so by typing it under this video. If you uh, like the lesson, you may share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. You'll get a new lesson the following week. Having said that, have a great day and see you next week with a new lesson. Take care, bye-bye.